Hey everyone, welcome to part 27 of this Dark Urge Tactician Mode Guide for Baldur's Gate 3. This is it, the finale, we finally made it to the end of this Dark Urge playthrough, and I'm so excited to be along on this journey with you. You know, it's been about six months in the making since I began making these uh, Baldur's Gate 3 videos, and I have thoroughly enjoyed this game and making these videos for you. Thank you so much for all of the questions and support that we've been giving each other. I really appreciate the community that we're building around this game, and I hope that you have enjoyed this journey just as much as I have. Let's begin by collecting two new allies. The first thing we want to do is to fast travel to the Lower City Central Wall Waypoint. When we get there, we're going to turn and start heading toward the north. We basically want to go back to where the Devil's Feet is, right up this path. And then when you get to the top, you're going to turn toward the right. Run past the Devil's Fee and keep going along the pathway. You'll see a staircase up ahead of you. You'll want to go up that staircase, and at the top we're going to see our old friend Damon. He's alive and well and set up shop right here in the lower city of Baldur's Gate. So when we get to the stairs, let's run around the corner and have a chat with him. Karnak, you're looking well. Would be a lot better if you'd find a way to fix this engine, Damon. I haven't stopped trying, but all roads lead to a dead end. Sorry, I didn't mean... Never mind. Glad you're all right in any case. Nice forge you've got here. Best I've had in years. Mistress of the house lets me operate from here for a fair price. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't happy. Good. Someone should be. Could we see your wares? Certainly. Damon has some really good equipment. He's got an arrow of dragon slaying that can come in very handy at the end of the game, so you might consider purchase that one. He's also got some really good pieces of armor, like the Legacy of the Masters. That's a pair of gloves that we can purchase. He's also got some good medium armors or some heavy armors. He even has some rare armors, like the Armor of Persistence, a very good piece of heavy armor. And he's got some good boots too, another purple set here, and that's called the Boots of Persistence. So feel free to purchase or steal any of this because it is very expensive, and then we can be on our way. I'm not going to pick up anything at this time, but if you want to, the choice is yours to deck yourself out with some new gear. Now we're going to fast travel over to the Basilisk Gate, and when we get there, we'll see that the place is under attack by some Mind Flayers who just happen to be in the crowd here. Unfortunately, we are surprised. This says the enemy surprised, but it's actually us being surprised, and the Mind Flayers will get their turn. Fortunately for us, they prefer to attack the weaker citizens around here, so we shouldn't really take that much damage. These guys are very easy to take out, especially with our very strong team. There's really not much strategy in all of this, so I'm just going to let this one play out. It'll only take a moment or two, and then I'll see you at the end of the fight. One day I'll catch a break. Knees high. Good idea, Carl. <gasps> Sweet. 
swift and lethal. In my best interest. <clears throat> All right, it's time for Gale to finish the fight. We're just gonna move him forward and this enemy is in range for a good old Eldritch Blast. It's a thing that I just picked up when I leveled up the last time. So let's go ahead and use it to finish off the fight. Now with all of the enemies gone, we want to continue on toward the sewers. There's actually a little bit of a quest marker on your mini map if you want to see that. Just run into this alleyway and use the manhole to go down into the sewers. We're going to go find where a mole has been hanging out since act two. So let's run forward just a little bit and along the west side, there's this crumbling wall. We can Eldritch Blast this thing right open and then continue on through. As we run forward, we're going to stick over toward the right hand side and run along this broken pathway. We'll get toward the end and then we'll go over toward the left side. There's going to be a staircase that will lead us all the way up and then at the top there's going to be a door. Here's the door over on the right. It is locked and why would you lockpick something when you can just blast it open? So once again, we'll use Eldritch Blast just to get through the door as quickly as possible. Okay, with the door broken down, we'll go inside and then turn toward the left. There's a staircase in front of you by this glowing brazier. We'll go down and get the inspiration point for Carlac called Outlander Beneath the Gate that gives us 220 experience points we don't need. And then we're going to continue forward along toward the east and we can find Mole standing over here. Nine fingers in wow, look who it is. Glad to see you in the city. Hope you found plenty of coin in Ketwick's coffers. Ready to do some business? I found the contract you signed with Raphael, Mole. Do you want it? Give me that! Can't have this floating around loose. I thought I was meant to be the thief. Is this how you survived the Shadowlands? A deal with Raphael? So what if it is? Choosing the right allies is just common sense. You wouldn't have made it this far on your own. Big Raph doesn't own me. He's just giving me the tools to keep myself alive and to take what I want. As for what that is, well, you didn't think I planned to stop at running the Fetch's Brats, did you? I'm impressed. You saw an opportunity for power and you took it. I knew you'd understand. Everyone's owned by somebody. Might as well sign up to be on the winning team. <laughs> Persuasion, make sure we're all on the winning team. There's a fight for the city's survival coming and I'll need your help. This has a skill check of 15. We've already got a bonus of plus eight, so hopefully it's not too difficult to roll this one. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Baldur's Gate is home now and the brats are my family. Nobody messes with my family. And with that, Mole has been successfully recruited to be an ally at the end of the game. So let's take a quick moment to look at our journal and see all the people that we've gathered as allies. We have Mole, Yurgir, Jahir is dead, so we don't have her anymore. Baal is on our side. Arabella, Floric, 
The Gandians don't count, but we do have Barkus and the Iron Hand Gnomes, Grand Duke Ravenguard, and Halson, and not to mention Volo. Each of them will either be summonable in battle, or we will get some sort of bonus and buff for having them as allies. And when we get to the end, I'll explain exactly what each one of those bonuses do. So let's go ahead and head over toward the Temple of Baal. We're going to move toward the end of the game at this point. So we're back in the Undercity Ruins by the Temple of Baal. We have to backtrack our way out of here, so kind of going the opposite way that we took when we came down here to fight Orin. Let's stick to the right hand side of the path and we're going to just go up these stone stairs and when we get all the way up to the top of those, then there's going to be some wooden stairs ahead of us. When we climb those, there's going to be a ladder. We'll go up the ladder and then we'll go up another ladder just on our left hand side. That will take us up to the higher platform. Let's continue to run along the path toward the north, just sticking toward the left hand side as we go around. So when we get up here, we'll just stick toward the left side of this intersection and run all the way up. You can look at the mini-map to see that kind of S shape. When we get up to the top, we're going to run into the building with the red circle around it, and then that will take us all the way down the path that we need to go. There's really no more forks or anything that we need to take. We'll just go straight down this path all the way until we see this large doorway that's kind of triangular shaped. We'll go through here and then just stick over toward the right-hand side. There's going to be some stairs that we can climb up and we'll go all the way to the top eventually the uh, emperor is going to talk to us a little bit about the cranium rats that's how you know that you're in the right spot and then you'll just keep on going all the way to the end of this platform and there's going to be a boat waiting for us at the end so run all the way down until you can get by the boat and then we're going to interact with it at that point we're going to get a little bit of a warning message because this is the point of no return so if you want to feel free to save the game right around here and then uh, when you're ready then go ahead and use the skiff and we'll be able to proceed on toward the end there's kind of a long cut scene here that plays out so i'm just going to skip that for the sake of time you can watch it yourself on your own game if you want to and then we're going to be in control of ourselves on the far shore let's climb up the cragged rock right next to us and then when we get to the top we can start running toward the west across this broken bridge along the way you'll constantly be interrupted by the the elder brain it will keep messing with you and just slowing you down but you just have to wait for a few seconds and then you'll be in control of yourself again let's stick all the way toward the right side as we go along this pathway and you'll see a bunch of intellect devourers running ahead we just want to follow them on their path going forward toward the north when you get to this part here where it kind of opens up across the bridge you want to slow down because there's an ambush waiting for you up ahead and we definitely don't want to be ambushed so before you run forward what you're going to do is to crouch down and just sneak your way forward you can go all the way toward the other side and climb up onto these rocks you don't want to jump or anything you can just walk straight up them and then just continue along with everyone sneaking you can completely bypass that fight which will just mean that you're going to save yourself some health in the end you'll go all the way to this broken bridge area and then you just have to jump across it it's pretty easy to go across and then we're going to be up on the other side once you're here you know that you're good and safe so you don't need to crouch anymore you can just stand up and then continue along the path as we go so the uh, Elder Brain will keep messing with us here, making us mind broken for a few seconds. Just make sure that everyone is standing up nicely so no one gets left behind. And then we'll continue along the path toward the north. We just have to jump over a little gap in the next bridge and then we're almost done with this section. We just have to keep going up and then over toward the left. And once you turn that corner toward the left, it's just a straight walk down toward the water's edge. You'll keep getting interrupted again by that elder brain. Just keep walking forward. Even if you have to stop for a few seconds, eventually you'll make it all the way to the bottom. When you get all the way to the bottom, a cutscene will play out and it's very long. It has a couple choices and a couple saving throws, but it doesn't matter if you succeed or fail. In fact, you're probably going to fail many of them. So don't worry about it. You don't have to use inspiration points or anything like that. You just go ahead and skip right through this and then it will be on the other side where we can control ourselves. So I'll skip the rest of this cutscene and we'll find ourselves inside the astral prism 
with the Emperor. He's going to head down the pathway. We just have to follow him. He gets to fly, and I suppose we could fly too, but we can just jump as well. We have that really low gravity environment, so we can make massive jumps all the way to the bottom, and then we just want to run forward and have a conversation with the Emperor when we get way to the bottom. This is the important part where we get to make a choice between whether we side with the Emperor or side with Orpheus. And for this, we're going to side with Orpheus. And we can do that pretty easily because we have the Orphic Hammer with us. So now let's go and talk to the Emperor for that cutscene. I have assessed our encounter with the Netherbrain from every angle. I know why we failed. The problem was not the stones. The problem was you. You can make only one move at a time, but the Netherbrain calculates every possible move at once. It knows what you will do. It knows everything you could possibly do. You cannot outmaneuver it. To defeat it, you would have to think like an Anithid. Better yet, be one. Your mind is not capable of this. Mine is. You will give the stones to me. I will assimilate Orpheus, and then I will be able to leave this prison to face the brain. Assimilate him? Skvar! No! Now is the time to liberate him! Do not stand against me. There is another way. We free Orpheus. You still don't trust me. After all we've been through. Remember, I have been your salvation from the very beginning. Your knight in shining armor. I freed you from the Nautiloid. Prevented you from crashing to your death. I have protected you ever since. At no small cost to myself. I came to you as a leader. But I did not shy away from showing you vulnerability. I needed you as much as you needed me. I was not above recognizing this. When you discovered my true identity, I did not flinch from the truth. I never lied to you. Not once. I am just like you. We have the same enemy. The same story. I encouraged you to fulfill your potential. All while protecting you from harm. Now I ask you for the last time to trust me. Release the Nether Stones to me. Do not forget, there's a card yet to come into play. The Orb. If we do not want to surrender the stones, we can still use it to ensure the brain's destruction. Along with my own, of course. This is a risk we cannot take. Your hubris drives you even now. You failed before. I cannot trust that you will not fail again. You must trust me. Hand me the stones. After the massive guilt trip speech, we're not going to comply. Enough. I have the hammer. I will free Orpheus. After everything I've done for you, I thought you understood the value of your freedom. When you destroyed the contract that bound you to deliver the crown. But now you insist on freeing the Gith Yankee and risking everything we worked towards. I told you the Gith Yankee would only want to kill you for what you are. Still, you choose to break our alliance. I had hoped for better, but I can't say I'm surprised. It was always in your nature to give in to temptation. Very well. Since you will not work with me, you work against me. You leave me no option but to join the Nether Brain. The Emperor has gone off to join the Nether Brain in a fight against us. We're going to switch it over to Lazelle. 
She's got the Orphic Hammer equipped and she knows how to use it. Let's run over to these red crystals. They're called Minor Orb of Domination. You'll break the one on the left side and then break the one on the right side. And as soon as that's done, you'll get a cutscene with Orpheus. of my powers and you slaughtered my honor guard nonetheless it seems we must be allies your majesty the prince of the comet gets true heir it is an honor do not patronize me you rejected the illithid when it no longer suited your needs no doubt you freed me because it suits you now. I will neither forgive nor forget your abuse of my powers. The Emperor held all the cards until now. I freed you at the first opportunity. That is false. You had the opportunity to surrender yourself to my honor guard. They would have given you a noble end. Any worthy individual destined to become Geek would have done so. My guard would have freed me, and I would have stopped the Elder Brain before it evolved into a Nether Brain. All that suffering, avoidable, were it not for the choices you made. Let's forget about the past. I was misled. What now? We will destroy the Nether Brain together, and put a stop to this nascent empire before it expands into the stars. The Geek was correct about one thing. The Netherbrain's power is beyond us. The hardest metal in the world would not cut through its mind, for it is made of thought itself. At this point, it will take an Elithid to unleash the full potential of the Netherstones. Someone will need to turn into a Mind Flayer. Are you willing to do that? Just as I was free. I will do it. I will become Elithid. I will sacrifice my soul for my people. I will end the grand design. My prince, you cannot. This is not your burden to bear. You are a true hero. The nether brain will be only too pleased to claim me. My prince, no! Even in my darkest hours, I knew it was my destiny to save my people. I could never have imagined this would be the way. Give Kartav Keem crushed. Once the grand design is ended, kill me. It is the very least you can do. Orpheus is free and he turned into an Illithid, which saves us from that fate. He goes over and opens up a portal that we want to go into. But before I go through it, I'm going to switch up Lazel's weapon. She's still holding that Orphic hammer, but she doesn't need it anymore. So I'm going to switch it out for her silver sword, that legendary one that we got from Voss, and then we'll be good to go. Let's go forward and now we'll interact with that portal and we'll go to the other side.
Let's start by running toward the east. There's going to be a broken walkway over here and some stairs. Start going up the stairs and you'll get into a cutscene with Voss automatically. And yet it is. Orpheus took this form so we could defeat the Netherbrain. Orpheus, my prince, what's become of you? The grand design must be ended. A sacrifice had to be made. The duty fell to me. I am not long for this world or any other. What of Vlacketh? What of our liberty? You underestimate your own people. Their imaginations have kept the name Orpheus alive for millennia. Bring them my message. Tell them my fate. Some will doubt. Some will mock. But some will listen. And the spark will be lit. Githyanki freedom means nothing if the grand design comes to pass. We need your help, Voss. Today, we strike at the brain. This champion holds the key to the Grand Design's end. Answer to him as you would to me. Your Majesty. I have spoken. As you wish. I stand at the ready. Your friendship. Your constancy. When I fell to despair, they elated me. Thank you, my friend. Shabazai. Shabazai. Now, to the Netherbrain. Let it be the first victim in the war for the skies. We can now summon allies to help us in battle, and we will definitely be doing that during the final battle. But for right now, what we want to do is to proceed forward so that we can go into a building and we can meet with all the people that we have now come to call allies. So go up and then over toward the left side, you'll be outside once again. Then turn right and go forward and you'll get a cutscene when you go through the door. We have lost much already, and we will lose more before the day is out. But even when the last soul falls, Baldur's Gate will stand. For Baldur's Gate is more than just a city. It is more than a place of opportunity for those of mercantile spirit. More than a place of refuge for those who are lost. More than a home for friends, loved ones, and adventuring souls. Baldur's Gate is a place where anyone can find what they need, if they're just willing to fight for it. Today, Baldur's Gate needs us. Today, we fight for... You're late, friend. This is the one you spoke of. The very same. The champion we've been waiting for. The one who will save Baldur's Gate from ruin. The Fist examines your illithid ally with suspicion. He was not expecting the savior of Baldur's Gate to be accompanied by a mind flare. Appearances may change, but they do not mask the one within. This one, I know. Observe with whom it traveleth, friends. This mind flare will fight with thee. It will save thy city and thy life. The fist eyes your illithid ally with suspicion, softening to curiosity. His hostility melting at the recognition that there's more behind those eyes than malice. My steel is yours, and I'm not alone. You helped me once. I figured it's time I paid you back. With magic. For saving Arabella, we get the Weave Walker passive ability, giving us freedom of movement. 
better at crafting steel than wielding it. Your friend here is armored and potion-fueled and ready for battle. Damon has armor-plated our owlbear cub and it is ready to fight. We can summon it into battle and also control it in battle. I have marshaled the best the Flaming Fist has to offer. We will fight to the last. Rescuing Counselor Flork allows us to summon in three non-controllable Flaming Fist defensive guards. You've unexpected friends, <laughs> but my debt to you still stands. The Iron Hand Gnome's firepower is yours to command. Just show us where it's needed. Barkus allows us to summon in two Iron Hand Gnomes that we can't control, but they can throw blinding bombs and shoot smoke powder arrows. Whatever strength I have to lend, I will lend it. I will make my city proud again. Duke Raven Guard gives us a 30 extra temporary hit points. Did you think I was gonna let you have all the fun? Mom looks out for her friends. Mine flyers included. And she'll have your back. Trust me. Mole gives us a perk called Fetcher's Favor. We gain the ability to cast Rays of Fire and we reduce all fire damage by 5 and we gain an additional 1d4 to charisma checks and saving throws. You can count on me, little rabbit. And your squiddy friend. I thirst for the hunt. We can now summon in Hellstalker Year Gear, and he will join our side in battle as a controllable character with his ability to shoot from a distance and also turn invisible. Not sure what I have to offer a mind flare, if I'm honest, but I hope my words of encouragement and reassurance will strengthen your uh, resolve. Volo gives us the passive ability Volo's Guide to Monsters. We gain plus two to all attack rolls, saving throws, and ability checks. The journey has been brutal, but I stand here a hell rider once more, and I would die a proud man if I died this day. Zevlor allows us to summon in the non-controllable Hellrider platoon consisting of one cleric, one paladin, and Zevlor himself as a paladin. Your father has sent me to your aid again, chosen one. Together we will bring new glory to his name. I will bless you in the coming battles. Let us bathe the way in blood. By giving into her urge, we gained Ball's favor as well as the perk A Most Bloody Inheritance. We can now cast Stunning Gaze and our critical hit attack roll requirement is reduced by two. This effect can stack with other abilities. All the strength of the lands we healed flows through me and from me to you and whatever company you keep. Halsing gives us the Spirit of the Land perk, giving us a plus one to all ability scores and plus two meters to our movement speed. Glad to have you with us, and not a moment too soon. The air is thick with anticipation. All eyes are on you. They're expecting a speech, something to stir their hearts and put fire in their bellies for the fight ahead. Our freedom depends on your bravery today. You are the guardians of the city. Well said. We'll prepare ourselves. We'll be ready when you call upon us. Baldurin's grace be with you. We've officially completed the quest to gather your allies. We are in a really good shape in terms of what buffs we have and the allies that we can call into battle for us. The last fight will be pretty easy. Let's go over and talk to Cole the Red, a traitor nearby. Bodies, bloods, this is the dream. Knew I was smart to sneaks in. The skelly boy said I could stay if I sold your stuff. So hurry up. Bye, bye, bye. I think he's got some stuff that we probably want, so let me see what you have. He does have the elixir of cloud giant strength, which will raise the strength of a character to 27. That's very powerful, so go ahead, buy that and anything else that you want, and then we're going to be moving on. 
So now what we have to do is to run up behind your gear. We're going to go east out of this room and then turn toward the left. We're going to run around the path here and then we're going to climb up the stairs on our right hand side. When you get to the top there's going to be a little bit of a cutscene as guards come running out of it. We want them to escape. We do not want them to go into battle. So you might want to make a save real quick. Ultimately you want to fail an insight check. That's actually an important failure for us. It makes it a little bit easier. So if you've saved the game, let's head up the stairs being wary of the fire as we go. And we're going to get into that cutscene now. We have to keep running. What's happening here? Mind flare. Mind flare. It's over. There's a glimmer of something beyond his words, but in a moment it's gone, consumed with fear. One last run, then we're clear. They're going to take off, which is perfect for us. That will allow us to sneak to where we need to be. So what we need to do is to gather everyone up close to one another, and then we want to cast invisibility on our whole party. That will allow us to all run all the way toward the other end of the section without the need for fighting anyone. So when you get them all grouped up, let's go ahead and cast invisibility. We'll have to use invisibility level six. That's what is required to get all five of our party members invisible. So once we've tagged them all, then as a big group, we'll all be invisible. Now we just have to start running toward the east, and we're going to go all the way to the end of the section until we reach a big door on the other side, and we can open that up, and that's going to be the halfway point of our invisible journey. Okay, we've made it all the way up to the top, past that spectator. We can open up these double iron doors and then go up inside here. We'll go over toward the right side. The game will auto save, which is good for us. And then we can go up to this kind of landing here on the steps. I'm going to let that invisibility drop off. And then with Gale, I'm going to cast invisibility just on himself. So all I have to use is a level two invisibility and that will only target Gale. So let's go ahead and click on that. And then we're going to start running up toward the south until we get a little bit of a cutscene. We automatically enter turn-based mode and we just have to run through this area, or should I say fly through this area while invisible. So use that fly command to get over all of this broken terrain and you'll just have to keep working your way up toward the top of this area like I'm about to show you. When you're done with Gale's turn, then just end his turn. It's going to be everyone else's turn. You can just quickly go through all of these and then it will be the environment turn, but nothing really happens here. You just have to wait for a few seconds. After the environmental turn, then we can just bring control back to Gale and we're going to fly over toward the left side of this area. Go left around the pillar and then you'll be able to fly right up here and we can just kind of keep going forward and eventually around the corner to the left. Once again, pass through all the turns for the characters that you're not currently using. And then when it's Gale's turn again, we're going to proceed forward from his current position. So once again, we're going to use the fly command and go forward and then over toward the left to just go right around the side here and we'll stop right at the top of these stairs. And then we're going to skip through everyone's turn and get back to Gale. It looks like I don't have quite enough movement speed to get around these guards, but if I use the fly command, I can actually go around the pillar and that will take me right next to the door. I can interact with it to open it up and then as soon as I take a couple steps inside, I'll get a cutscene.
very conveniently all of our party members are brought up here so we don't have to try to sneak past or kill anything on the way up here. I was very surprised to not see the restoration pod over here that existed on the last playthrough but maybe Tactician disables it. That's okay, I have a way around that. So starting off we want to make sure that all of our characters are properly equipped and buffed. So starting off with Karlak, we're going to go into the inventory and we're going to give her that elixir of cloud giant strength that we just purchased to raise her strength all the way up to 27. Let's now switch over to Gale. He's missing his level 6 spell slot, and we really want that for the next fight. So look in your inventory for the Potion of Angelic Slumber. You'll fall into a sleep for two turns, which will basically act like a long rest. So you get all of your spell slots back. It lasts for two turns, which is the equivalent of 12 real-life seconds. So you just have to wait it out while Gale takes a little nap. And then when he's done, he'll be good to go. We do want to give him another elixir, though. If you find the uh, Supreme Elixir of Arcade Cultivation, you'll gain an additional level 4 spell slot, which can come in handy. So go ahead and have him drink that, and then he'll be a little bit better on the magic side. So now that that's done, we're just going to save the game really quick, and then we're going to go ahead and interact with the brainstem. When you interact with the brain stem, you will be prompted if you actually want to go and face the nether brain. So let's just say yes so that we can continue on with our cutscene. Can't you feel it? We're almost there. Once we ascend the nether brain stem, we'll be in touching distance of the crown. Of reclaiming the powers of Karsus himself. I'm ready. Are you? I'm ready. Let's get you that crown. Then I think it's about time we ascended. Don't you? The cutscene that follows here is over two minutes long, so for the sake of time, I'm going to skip past it and go right into when we start the fight. All right, here we are at the final battle. We get all of our characters up front. It looks like the order is the Dark Urge, Gale, Lazel, and Karlak, followed by Orpheus. You can't move Orpheus forward in this list, unfortunately. He's got to go last of our group, and there are a lot of enemies nearby, too. What I'm doing to begin the fight is just bringing everyone in very close to one another. So I just want to have a big group of all of our party members as close together as possible. So now once we're in a tightly knit group, what I'm going to do is go over to the Dark Urge. I'm going to backtrack just a little bit to create a small space in between all of us. And then we're going to go into our inventory and find a potion of speed. Once we find it, we're going to choose the throw command because we want to actually throw this at our party members, but not directly at them. You basically want to aim for the ground. You should be able to see from the little circle under their feet who's affected. You definitely want to make sure that Karlak is affected by this, but everyone else who gets it too by having it splash onto them, all the better. The Dark Urge now has a second action thanks to that haste effect, so I'm going to hold the right directional button to call forth allies and choose Kithraki Inferno. This acts like a very powerful wall of fire that we've used before. You just have to select it on one end and then drag it through to somewhere else and then click it. We want to go right through all of these enemies. We can burn them all and do a ton of damage to them when that dragon comes in and breathes a line of fire down on the ground. So after that, we see that quite a few of the enemies took about half of their health and damage, so they're not feeling too well. And I'm going to then use the Dark Urge to make a follow-up attack. I can use another ranged attack on one of the enemies over here. There's one hiding out right here. There's also the one right here inside the fire. I'm going to attack the one in the fire. I don't want to use my critical hits just yet, so pass on that. And I hit that enemy, and now he's pretty weakened. I do get charmed, so I can't do any other attacks to him. That's okay. I'm just going to scoot off to the side just a little bit, and then I'm going to pass the turn. So now I'm going to switch it over to Karlak. Now she is hastened, and we have the ability to frenzy with her, which will get us another attack. So let's go ahead and frenzy first, and then we can use our enraged throw, and we're going to toss it right over to the Emperor. We're going to knock him down, and we're going to actually eliminate him on this very first turn before he has a chance to do anything. So he got burned by the Kithraki Inferno, and now we're just going to throw a whole bunch of the Nyronlas over here. It's also doing a little bit of damage to the dragon behind him. If you attack the dragon directly, then you will get a counterattack from him where he breeds a lot of fire on you. You don't really want that, but you can do AoE damage and just chip away at his health a little bit. 
And here's the last throw that killed the Emperor. He is no more. He never got a chance to do anything to us. But we're not done yet. We can throw and we're going to attack this Dream Guardian over here. We can hit him and take him out. But we also have Action Surge. So let's go ahead and use that. And we're going to throw a little bit more over here toward this Dream Guardian. And we're going to hit him a couple times and take them out. So I get a lot of critical hits here. That's because of that most bloody inheritance perk that we got because we sided with Ball and Embrace Our Urge, which lowered the requirements for a critical hit by two. Now we're going to move Gil forward a little bit, and that will put him into range of using Magic Missile, and he'll be able to take out the other two enemies on the right side. So we will have destroyed the entire enemy's front line, including all four of the Dream Guardians and the Emperor himself, all on that very first turn. So this is a really good start to the fight. I'm just going to spread the damage out with magic missiles. We only want to use a level 5 magic missile. Level 6 is off limits for right now because we need that spell slot for something else. So now we can just kind of pass the turn here. I'm going to move Lazel forward just to kind of the tip of this area and then I can summon an ally. Doesn't really matter who you choose, I'll take Florix Cohort, these are just good defensive guys and I'm going to put them right as far away as I can right next to the dragon. So now the dragon will have something else to focus on besides me and these guys will chip away at the dragon's health as well. So nothing that I really need to do here, I'm going to pass the turn letting our fist defenders start attacking. And here you can see that counterattack, which can do a ton of damage. We definitely don't want to be on the receiving end of that counterattack, which is why we wanted these allies here just to distract the dragon, as well as the four mind players who are up top on the other side of the arena from us on the other side of that fire line. So we're just kind of letting that all pass, and now it's Orpheus' turn. We can move forward with him, and he does have some really powerful Illithid abilities. The one that I want to use right now is Mind Blast. It has a chance of stunning an enemy, and you can hit the dragon from far away. And you can see I do in fact get the stun, so I don't have to worry about that thing attacking me the next time around. We can use another attack as well. I'm going to go with Potent Concentrated Blast. If I'm not quite in range, I can move forward a little bit. I don't want to go too far though because you'll see that all of these tentacles will start popping up out of the ground. The tentacles don't do too much damage, but they are annoying because they can grapple you and hold you in place, and we don't really want that. The Potent Concentrated Blast does connect and does 28 damage, so that's not bad. I have yet another action that I can use because I have the Permanent Mind Sanctuary allowing me to use actions and bonus actions interchangeably. I'm going to just tentacle whip the tentacle right next to me. It'll do some good damage, not enough to kill it though, but I'm going to end my turn right there. These enemy mind flayers love to cast Magic Missile. You can shut it down with a counter spell level 3, that's pretty easy. Or you could do something like a Psionic Dominance if you want to shut it down. There are four different mind flayers at the top and they will each try to shoot down at your party members or your allies. So it's a good idea to stop probably two of them from attacking and then there will only be two of them that will actually connect with your party members. It might be enough to kill them, and in fact you'll see that it does indeed kill off our allies pretty efficiently. And that tentacle grabbed me, so now Orpheus can't move until I get rid of that tentacle. You can see that magic missile completely obliterated one of my allies, and here comes another one. That ally gets smoked, there's nothing that I could do to save him, but I do have one more ally over there right at the foot of the red dragon, which is perfect. You really don't want to end your turn with no allies for that red dragon to focus on, but the red dragon is stunned for this turn, so we don't have to worry about attacking right now. I'm going to go forward with Gale almost all the way to the fire. We don't want to quite get burned, but we'll get close enough. And then what we're going to do is use our level 6 spell, which is called Arcane Gate. What we're going to do is we're going to select one side over here, right here. We'll just click here. And then we're going to go over all the way to the other side, and we're going to click it again. So it's kind of like the... Wall of Fire or the Cthraki Inferno, you have to click two different spots and then it will create a portal that is linked on both sides of the area. Now to get to the other side, because I'm pretty low on movement speed, I'm just going to misty step with Gale over toward where that portal is. So that way all of our party members will be together on the other side close to our objective. 
that tentacle came up, but there's nothing that I really want to do about it right now, so I'm going to skip it over to the Dark Urge, and then he is going to take a quick shot down there at that tentacle and finish him off, which will free up Orpheus. No need to roll a critical hit on this one either. Take out the tentacle, and now we're going to use the Arcane Gate and teleport ourselves all the way to the other side of this area. I'm going to hold off on attacking for just now because I want to bring more of my party members over to this side. So let's switch it over to Karlak and she will be able to use that arcane gate to put her on the other side as well. And she's in good position to start taking out these enemies. We're going to go ahead and use an enraged throw. We can target this Lithid Arcanist. It's going to hit him and knock him down. And now we're going to use the, our other enraged throw to attack another one of the minor players. This is the one all the way on the far right. The positioning might be a little bit screwy thanks to that little claw looking thing on the very end. You may have to adjust your positioning just a little bit in order to hit him, but I'm actually in a good spot. Let's finish off this Alithid with a throw, and now we can use our bonus action to throw again. We're going to attack the one that we hit over here. Just make sure that you aim it properly, and then we're going to have two enemies eliminated on this side. But we're not done yet, because we're hastened, we get to throw two more of them. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll toss the Nyralna up onto this enemy over here, and we're going to hit him, and then we're able to follow that up with yet another throw. So that was six throws in one turn. If we had action surged right now, we could have gotten eight throws and taken out all of the enemies up top. Unfortunately, I did miss that one, but that's okay. I'll be able to focus on that one and eliminate him in just a second. So now what I want to do is to attack this enemy with a ranged attack, and that will be able to finish him off. There's no need to roll a critical hit here. He's going to be dead, and now I have another attack because I'm hastened. I can just use my normal main hand attack to go after this tentacle. For some reason, it wants me to run around everyone, which would provoke an attack of opportunity. Sometimes you just got to be careful and explicitly say where you want to move, just right next to it. And now you can attack normally. And because of my really good equipment, my new legendary weapons that I got from Orin, I can take out that tentacle no problem. And now I'm just going to move the Dark Urge up to the top part. We want to start to gather our party members up in the center area here. So just move them all up here as slowly as you go and then you'll be able to keep on going from here. With Lazelle, we're going to go through the arcane gate to the other side, and then I'm going to have her try to jump up to the top area. She does have an amazing ability to jump, so we want to get as most movement out of her as possible and get her into a position where she can start to attack the enemy. So we'll move her over here, and now she's got three attacks every single turn because she has her normal action, her extra action and her improved extra attack so let's go ahead and just start shooting arrows over here at this guy we're not going to be able to kill him in fact we actually get a miss and then he uses a shield on the last one so we don't do a whole lot of damage to him but he, he did take a little bit of damage to begin with we'll have our ally attack and then that will proc the counter attack and kill him that's okay though because now i don't have to worry about a counter attack because it only gets one of them per turn I'm going to try to mind blast the enemy again, and I do get the stun, so I don't have to worry about him this turn either. We have a couple of movement options. We could either go through the arcane gate, or I'm just going to fly through the fire. You know, I don't really care, and that will take me over to the other side. So let's just move over toward the other side of the area. We'll take a little bit of damage, but I've got so much health right now, it really doesn't matter at all. When we get to the other side, we're confronted with another tentacle popping out of the ground. I'm going to tentacle whip it a couple times. The first one will do over half of its health and damage, and then I just have to follow that up with yet another tentacle whip, and that will finish off this tentacle, and that will allow me to get out of here without provoking an attack of opportunity. So let's just bring Orpheus up to the top section here, and then he's going to be in a good spot. The dragon is stunned and not able to do anything, but this Alithid can use Magic Missile on Lazelle, so she's going to take a little bit of damage, but I can totally endure that. Now we just have to finish off the last remaining enemies. Technically, they don't have to be gotten rid of, but it just makes things a little bit smoother, and I'm running out of my hastened effect, so I'm going to be hit with Lethargic. 
And that would be really bad, especially after you go through the ending portal and fight the real last boss. So I'm just going to kind of wait out my turns a little bit, all the while chipping away at the red dragon here. I would definitely recommend trying to stick perilous stakes on him, that way he takes double damage from all sources, and that's going to be very key for eliminating him quickly. It might be worth saving the game before trying to hit that perilous stakes just in case it misses you can always just reload it from there and try again i know it saves coming but it is allowed in this run if you're going for that trophy honor mode maybe not so much now it's going to be the dark urges turn i'm going to hit him with a ranged attack here it's going to do quite a bit of damage to him actually as i get that critical hit he counterattacks with fire, which actually doesn't really do anything to me, thanks to that Fletcher's favor from Mole. So now that that's done, I'm going to use another range attack to attack this dominated red dragon. Don't need to use a critical hit here, just pass on that. And now I'm going to go into my inventory, and I'm actually going to use my arrow of dragon slaying that I have. So if you use this, it will do double damage to dragons, and it's already got double damage thanks to the Perilous Stakes. So we're going to hit him with that. I roll an automatic critical hit, or a natural one, so I don't need to use the Luck of the Far Realms on this one either. And it does a lot of damage. It did over 70 damage with just that one attack. So the more of those arrows you have, the better. You can really tear through his health pretty quickly. So I'm going to just uh, finish up my turn attacking him a couple more times and you'll see I get lots of critical hits thanks to that Ball's Blessing of the Most Bloody Inheritance perk. That perk also lets us cast Stunning Gaze. I didn't get it to stick but that would have been really cool if I could stun him yet another time. Well with Karlak we're going to move her up to the top and then she's going to do her work to try to take out the remaining enemies. So let's start by using an Enraged Throw. We're going to target this enemy over here and try to knock him down and just eliminate him. So he's very well hurt at this point. I can go ahead and use my Nyralna to now attack the dominated red dragon. We'll enrage throw down there. It can't be knocked prone, but it can still do a lot of damage to him. This enemy's health is very low. I don't really want to use another throw on that. It's kind of an overkill. So I'm just gonna keep throwing down toward the red dragon. Hopefully I can finish him off pretty soon. So he's down to 52 health. Let's throw this. And you can see he actually gets killed outright from there with another critical hit. So that dragon's gone. And now all I have to do is to finish off the enemy on the other side. And then all of them will have been eliminated. So let's throw this one over here and then he's going to be dead. And I don't have any more enemies remaining except for the main objective. But I'm almost in the spot where I'm going to be lethargic. So I don't really want to start that just yet. I do want to burn through that turn. There are two turns remaining until the Nautiloid appears. That doesn't really matter though. It's just going to try to shoot some stuff down at us that will have no effect on us because we're nowhere near where those blasts are going to land up. So you can see that now I am lethargic. There's nothing I can do this turn. I just kind of have to wait around for it. And I'm going to now move Orpheus into place and then he is going to use an ability called Karsus's Compulsion. I'm going to use it on the crown of Karsus. It has to charge for a whole turn. You gotta go through this one all the way through your next turn, and then you're going to be able to actually go through a portal and fight the Elder Brain or the Nether Brain on the inside. So we're just gonna let this go a little bit. The Nautiloid's going to start making its way over toward us. And now we have to get ourselves prepared to go inside that portal and take this thing out as soon as possible. Just like when we began this section, we're going to do the same trick of trying to gather our party close enough together so that we can use our throw in order to get a potion of haste down or a speed potion to get everyone hastened as best as we can. So I'm not able to hit everyone with it necessarily, and I do have two potions remaining, so I have a couple tries to hit it. I can also have Gale use haste, that does require concentration, but I can put that on anyone else. So someone outside of our little circle, like Lazelle, I can just make her hastened, and then I can use the throw ability to throw a speed potion into the rest of the group and hoping that I can get everyone to be hastened from here. So let's go into our inventory and use that speed potion. We're gonna throw it down on the ground and then try to hasten everyone around us. 
So we have to be very careful about the placement. You can see a little bit of a white circle on the ground. That's really how you know where it's going to land. And for some reason, it only hit Orpheus, which is really concerning to me. I already used up my actions because I went into the inventory, but I can use a follow-up action or an extra attack to throw the actual item to where I want it to be. So let's find it in the inventory and then give that a throw. Okay, here's the potion of speed. I'm going to throw it very carefully onto the ground, and I definitely want to make sure that I hit as many people as possible. I do get Carlac, Gale, and the Dark Urge on that one, so now every single person has been hastened. I got haste from Gale onto Lazelle, and then potions for everyone else. Now the portal is going to open when Orpheus' turn is over, and you'll get a little cutscene. Let's start by flying or levitating all the way down toward the bottom so that we're in melee range. We're going to hit it with a tentacle whip. Now something you should keep in mind is that the first time this nether brain is attacked for every single turn, it is going to counterattack and cause mind broken which will stop you from using your follow up actions. It will kind of just shut you down for the most part. So you want to make sure that whoever attacks at first is able to endure that number one and live but also that it's not going to screw up what you want to do for your attack pattern there. Okay, the nether brain is going to then have its turn to attack and it does some kind of weird stuff. It likes to throw out these orbs of negation all over. What that does is it marks some of these platforms in red. I actually got a very unlucky pattern here because the next turn when those orbs go off, they will destroy the platform that they are over, anything that's glowing red around it. And then if any character is standing on it, they are going to go to their death. So we definitely don't want that. We need to stay off of those red platforms. Unfortunately, a whole lot of this whole area is going to be those platforms which are endangered. So we're gonna switch over to Carlac and we're going to move her into this area and then she can move over toward the edge here. We don't wanna to jump to the red platforms. We wanna stay on the ones that are more gray in color. Let's go ahead and just start shooting with the range attacks. The reason we do this is because if you were to throw something, there's a very high probability that it will not come back to you. It just kind of gets lost, and that's not so good, but I can just shoot as many of my ranged attack arrows as I want to. They do pretty decent damage as well, so just keep chipping away at them. When the last potion of speed ended and we became lethargic, we lost our frenzy, so we're just going to re-frenzy here just in case we need it a little bit later on. But we can just end the turn because we lost them due to the counter attack from the nether brain. Now we're going to bring in Lazelle. She's going to go in and start attacking as well. She does have a lot of attacks. She gets a normal attack, then an extra attack, then an improved extra attack. And because she's hastened, that doubles it to six. And then I can use action surge to get the original three back. So that's a total of nine shots that I can take this turn and I intend to do that. I'll begin with a Hunter's Mark bonus action and then I'm going to start by using the Menacing Attack ranged. This does pretty good damage and it has the benefit of possibly inflicting Frightened on him. It's not very likely though. I just want to hit him three times with those Menacing Attacks and then I get to do it all over again because I'm hastened and I get three more attacks. When that's over, I'm going to use Action Surge and then my three final attacks. I don't have enough of those red superiority dice to actually fund all of that, but I'm going to go through them all anyway just because, like I said, they do good damage and I don't have to use them for anything after this. So this is a no holds barred fight. We just have to get through it and destroy him as quickly as possible before he blows up all of the platforms that we're standing on. 
So I just action surge, I get to attack a few more times, hopefully I hit them. I don't always do that though, it's always disappointing when you see that miss pop up. But I have him to under 50% health on this very first turn, so I think that we're doing alright there. Now it's going to be Gale's turn, I want him to go in and because he's hastened he gets to use two different spells and I'm going to use Magic Missile for both of those. I'm going to use my strongest ones possible which would be a level 5 and then a level 4. So let's start by attacking him that way and just see how much damage we can rack up. He started at 196 so let's go ahead and start blasting him with that and now he's down to 127. Now let's use another one of our magic missiles. We just want to get him to below 100 health. That's all that we need. And there's a very particular reason for that. So he's down to 69 health, very nice. And we're going to hop through the portal as the Dark Urge, and we can actually kill him in one shot here. And you might be wondering how we do that, and that's because we gave into the Urge, we got a new attack, and it's very powerful. In fact, it's so powerful, it's called Power Word Kill. We can compel an enemy with 100 hit points or fewer to die instantly, but we can only use it one time. Luckily for us, this is the only enemy left in the game. So let's go ahead and use Power Word Kill on the Nether Brain and kill him to finally beat the game. Impossible. on the cusp of its final thought, and it's taking all of Orpheus's strength to keep it there. An opportunity, perhaps. You glimpse the lifelong destiny promised by your father. Enslave, dominate, ruin. In your father's name, you must seize your rightful claim to the brain, not destroy it. If you do not, then he will flay and shred your mind so it cannot even comprehend the horrors he will plague you with. Feel free to make a save here in case you want to back it up and get both endings, but for the Dark Urge specific one and the trophy, we have to claim the Absolute in the name of Baal, kill Orpheus. What I was born to do.
in Baal's name. Congratulations! With that, we get the critical hit trophy for beating the game on tactician mode. We also get the trophy called Sins of the Father for beating the game using the Dark Urge only ending. And we get the coveted Pride of Baldur's Gate Platinum trophy for achieving every other trophy and achievement in the game. And as the credits roll, I just want to once again express my deep gratitude to you for coming through this series with me. Like I said at the beginning, it's been a long journey here. It's been a kind of tough game for me to cover, but I'm very happy to have done it and to be able to provide this guide to you. I truly hope that you found it helpful and I hope that you enjoyed this as we went through it together. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to give me a like and also subscribe if you want to see my future projects. If you feel like being a financial supporter of the channel, there's the option to become a channel member, which will grant you exclusive perks, or you can just drop me a tip using a super thanks. All of that is very appreciated. But of course, don't do it unless you can afford to do it. I wouldn't want you to put yourself into a bad situation just to say thanks to me. All right, well, that is a wrap for the Baldur's Gate 3 trophy guide. Again, thank you so much for watching and coming along with me. I hope to see you soon on another project. Until then, thanks for watching and have a good day.